and we are recording and this is a little talk i prepared very quickly yesterday um we're gonna talk about character design it's a exciting subject for me i, I really love character design and I, I love especially making it in quill this is so fun to, to to make characters in quill and you know it just just so quickly and then suddenly you got that thing there that you can animate so if i have time i would love to create a character after i go through the the um, theories and the concepts and stuff so i have to go a little fast <laughs> But I would like to, to do that if, if we have time. So, character design. I'm not a huge um, professional character designer myself, but I've learned over the years, you know, what's where good, where are the good character designs, where are bad. Um, I did work as a character designer for a couple of projects in Cartoon Network in, in the UK, uh, but I didn't, you know, continue. I, I was more always more of an animator. But sometimes I had this role of character designer just because the they gave me these projects, so uh, I had to do everything: with this, uh, design it, animate it, blah blah, blah etc. So, what's the important thing uh, that we need to first uh, bear in mind when we are creating characters? Obviously, the story is very important. Who is this character? What is it? You know, is a male, female? Is a human? Is an animal? Is a thing? What is his personality? What's the background? You know, in the story that you're trying to tell, what's the character? How does the character fit on the story? Is it a bad guy? Is it a good guy? Is it young? Is it old? All these things are going to affect the design, the actual physical aspect of this character, right? Um, things that I've been gathering over the time and also doing some research, um, that those are these are all basic concepts that you can all find online. You can find all this stuff online, but uh, things that I apply, you know, normally when I when I try to design my characters, uh, clarity is a very important thing. Um, silhouette, you know, you just have a recognizable silhouette for your character, right? This is a obviously uh, super famous examples of really strong silhouette that you can you can just do whatever with that silhouette. You always know what character we're talking about here, right? Um, distinctive feature. This is something that I used in the remedy, <laughs> in the the little, you know, the little soup, the little hair that comes out. I always wanted that for her to be a recognizable aspect, even if she's far away and you see, you only see her, her ponytail flying with the with the wind. I always try to get that thing kind of coming out, so you can see that in the distance and that silhouette, you know. And I wanted that to be a distinctive aspect of her. Um, but a lot of you know a lot of other characters famous they have this distinctive thing that com comes out like especially here that we have the points um, color palette that's something also very important I'm not a huge color expert but but uh, if you look at really good character designs they they tend to have simple color palettes and made in a way that it's super recognizable and, and it's you, you don't forget it not a combination of colors and and not an amount of uh, range just to keep it in, in a depending on the character as well but um yeah just simplify color palette i think is also a good it's a good thing to to bear in mind not having necessarily all the all the possible hues in one character right um Exaggeration based on story, based on the based on the decisions that we made here. Exaggeration is something that really helps with clarity, right? Like you want your character to to be clear, to read clearly what it is, who it is, and in order to get that super clear, we need to use exaggeration caricature, right? Caricature is a form of um, making things more clear for the audience, right? So really, really important, all these aspects for clarity. Uh, visual language, that's also something that this, we could have a completely different talk just about that because it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting subject, but um, I'm just going to keep it quick. Uh, things that are very important to bear in mind is obviously things that work on a deep level, on a, 
on an instinctive instinctive uh, level in your brain that you you just you just react to f certain things in a certain way. So shapes on a card that are very soft and round tend to give you this kind of warm and nice feeling. Uh, you know, uh, a character that has big eyes and a slightly cross-eyed uh, automatically gives you a sense of innocence and you empath uh, empath uh, you have empathy for this character. Um, obviously, the younger a character looks, the more empathy you got for, for this character. So you're going to connect more with this character. You're going to feel warm and kind of you know, you wanna be his friend. You wanna take take. Care. You wanna make sure that this card doesn't doesn't suffer any any danger or anything like that. The color palette. I'm not I'm not sure if this is the right choice, but also affects your instinctive reacting to the character, right? So if you choose muted colors and kind of soft palette, you're gonna also react in this way to this character, right? And you know. Um, uh, obviously, the, if, you, if we go the opposite spectrum, if we start to have a lot of points, sharp edges, corners, straight lines, pointy teeth, no eyes, almost no eyes, just really reduced or crunched, a lot of wrinkles. So all these things in a character, if you keep adding that, is going to give you this feeling of threat, danger, um, instability. You know, uh, you're not, you're not. This character is not giving you a good feeling, or is, is giving you a, a sense of threat, right? And the color palette also can help with that. But uh, I'm not sure this is the right example. But maybe the the idea for the color, if you want these kind of feelings, you wanna give a lot of contrast and saturation to your colors, right? The saturation, if you if you crank it up, you're gonna get that feeling as well of and contrast of you have complementary colors, maybe that that contrast gives you this kind of unease, you know, and the feeling on your visually, and 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 all these things are very subjective and are very like like I said in the, in a deep level that you the audience doesn't even realize uh, the reaction that they're having to the character, right? In this, and there's more things about this uh, that you can research online, but for me these are the the the, the two spectrums, right? The, Nice. Yeah, what you just said, I think, pretty. goes beyond beyond characters, right? It also like for storytelling in general. Yes. But I think the key word you used was um, contrast, because you know, like I think a simple way to look at it is Lion King, right? The hyena world and the Mufasa world. Exactly. Um, the hyena world is super gray and stuff, and uh, yep. super dark. Versus like the Mufasa world is super colorful. So I I don't think there's like a right or wrong here like in like you chose red because it stays in contrast to mm -hmm. the you know to the baby colors and stuff exactly, like that so yeah, yeah. it's always a relationship be between yeah. those two yeah i i i yeah that's yeah this is these are not good examples yeah the the, the gordo is right like the color if you want the colors to to make a special feeling you have to use contrast right the contrast between this color and this color creates this kind of uh, thread or whatever. If you have less contrast, I think that's what gives you this kind of more uh, feelings of uh, relaxed innocence and everything. But yeah, yeah, there's a lot that you can do with that with the color language. Uh, and just moving on to more design stuff, appeal is another concept that comes up when when you talk about character design. Um, What's appealing? What's not appealing? That's also very subjective, but uh, but there's a couple of things that that we can all agree, and and it's all about your style as well. Each each style of every artist is going to be appealing in its own way, right? But there's a couple of things that normally work. Is your geometric shapes are always very appealing, and if you try to stick with those, they tend to work and they tend to give your character uh, a sense of design that it's appealing, that it's pleasing to the to the, to the eye uh, the concept of rhythm is a concept of breaking up a little bit the proportions uh, in in this example I try to you know you, if you have a character that all the proportions are very even and they're very uh, well distributed and very normal it tends to be boring and it's not so appealing and, and if you try to play with the proportions a little bit more 
uh, it's much more fun and more interesting, right? And also detail is a concept that comes in rhythm because if you have a character that has detail all over his body, you have all detail, detail here, detail here, in all the parts, it gets confusing. The audience doesn't know where to look, you know, it's, it's all over the place. But if you have a character where he has more detail on the face but then maybe it's more empty on the body or he has more detail here and then not so much here, um yeah just distributing the detail as well that helps helps with the rhythm you know have a nice proportion and flow is more about a, a similar concept to silhouette i guess but it's also trying to get lines that continue like for example this line starts on the on the skull on the on the head but you can continue that line even to the very bottom of your character and the same for for the belly and continues all the way to the to the food. No, so it doesn't always work in all the characters that you try to design, but but it's good to have a good sense of flow of the the character anatomy, right? To to give you that pleasing, nice. And I forgot to add something else here. Uh, straight versus um, curve. That's also a a, a good concept that helps a lot in character design. Um, you know, so the typical example, you can have a character have like a straight on, on this side and a curve on the other side. Let's say this is the belly, right? So that this contrast between a straight and curve creates a really cool appealing, like if you're designing the, the for example, the legs, when you're when we're doing the leg of a character, I always try to get that contrast between straight and curve, and then that that same curve kind of flows onto the the foot here, and we have a straight here, curve here. So I don't know it's 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 something that's more coming from traditional drawing to the drawing, but applies a lot for even if we have 3d characters in quill um yeah watch watch madagascar for that <laughs> yeah they use this concept it's a lot it's right? the best example for straight against curves in uh 3d yeah so how are we doing in time uh, we're 15 like 15 minutes, minutes. oh that's good yeah. that's good so maybe we can do a uh, live design later <laughs> if we uh, if i'm able to do it, I don't know. I'm I'm not super fast, but anyway. And the last thing the the is good to remember is anatomy versus style. I well, basically this goes along. It's a it's a kind of the whole concept of a style is very subjective. Each artist has its own style, its own. Every artist has a background of influences or life uh, you know your personal life affects the way you draw as well your your experiences and your in your career and the different um, you know the different teachers that you had or people who you look up to is all of those things are going to influence your your character design style as well you know but your style um sometimes um it's good to remember to if you know um you have to also ask yourself how much of your style is going to combine with the actual anatomy of the character that, that you're designing, right? So, yeah, I don't know. I thought it would be a good idea to do this. <laughs> to find the, the right balance between your style, your 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 special stylized world, and also a little bit of, well, let's see what's the, what's the balance that we can find between that and the the actual science and the actual anatomy of the character you're, that you're building, right? In this case, I did, uh, I wanted to do an elephant that is kind of balancing, hey, balance, you see? <laughs> and I I tried to get my my own, you know, style that is very influenced by the Disney movies and also the French comic book artists and the Spanish comic book artists. I have that style in there, but I also add a little bit of that kind of, scientific knowledge of okay i know the skull of an elephant has this this little bump and i know the trunk is like that and you know and i know the elephant has this three nails whatever uh you know and i i did all of this guy 
without looking at any reference. I, I just know in my head the anatomy of an elephant because I just I've seen so many elephants in pictures, in real life, in uh, in videos, and I I just I did this by memory because of that, right? So if you don't have that memory, it's always good to have a bunch of photographs and and whatever thing that you can use to document yourself and inform yourself about the actual anatomy of your character and then use that um, for that information, right? Um, and I think that's all the concepts that I wanted to talk about before jumping into drawing and doing something. But is there any question about all of this stuff? Um, it's less of a question. This is more of a technical note that I wanted to point out too. Um, especially in Quill, I feel like it's important to keep in mind how you're building a character too, and how detailed you get. Because um, I've been building some characters for animation just for a little bit for my own stuff, and I noticed that the more detailed and the more stuff I want to add to them, it's just it's a lot more stuff I have to do um and animate later on like if i have this wizard character with like a ton of robes and flowing cloth that's just extra stuff i have to do mm -hmm. um plus also figuring out how to build it in quill can be um its own challenge and seeing how well it animates so it's it's like there's also a little bit of technical stuff what yeah, comes with building it which i don't know if you're gonna touch on it all but it's something to keep in mind so I think um, that would be more like an optimization thing. Um, I usually yeah. try to separate design from um, the technical stuff. So like if you're not um, familiar, like if you don't have optimization and muscle memory, I always recommend don't worry about that first, you know, like worry about the design first and then recreate it the way you want to use it because it's really difficult. I, I figured that it's really difficult to do both at the same time if you're not really, if you don't really know what you can do in terms of optimization. So um, I think I said it in a past stream, but when I did Last Oasis, I was distracted by optimization. So I focused on design first and just did everything the way I wanted. And um, I would do the same here, just worry about the character design first. And then when you get to really cre recreating him for animation, that's when you do the optimization as a second step. Um, doing both at the same time might be a little bit difficult. Yeah, yeah that's really good. That's uh, a really good way to do it. I found that if you're if you put your dial toward this way a little bit more, you're it's gonna be more optimized normally. <laughs> I mean, the more the more you go to the oh, abstract, yeah. the more you go to the cartoony. Uh, you know. Uh, your particular style, simple geometric shapes. The more you go that way, it'll, it'll, it'll work better in Quill, in Quill Theater for optimization purposes. The more realistic we try to go, uh, obviously more detail, more more com more things that we're we're gonna have to build and, and obviously it's just harder it's just harder to make a, a character that is realistic in quill obviously um if you put, where would you put um remedy on that scale um that's the that's a good question i think it's somewhere there i don't know it's a little bit more in the middle i guess because uh, yeah it's it's very comic book style and it's very abstract in the color palette and a lot of things are not realistic at all and even, especially the kid is kind of <laughs> cartoony but I, they do have anatomy and they do have like like sometimes i try to draw a little bit of a muscle um yeah, it's interesting i would have gone a little bit more to the left on this you scale. think it's this way uh the remedy um like not that be. far um, yeah. Above the eye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's very, I th this is very symbolic. It's just really super subjective. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a good thing to, to bear in mind as of how far to the right or the left you're, you want your character to be. Um, because you don't want to be completely South Park. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess you can, and, and it's funny, but. It has to compensate with, I mean, South Park works because the script and the jokes are so fucking good that you don't care of the how bad the, cam the, 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 the character designs are, right? But so South how, Park is all 3D, right? South Park is all done in Maya. It's Maya, but it's all, it's all, <laughs> um, it's all uh, flat. Yeah. 
Um, but it's 3D. <laughs> flat 2D. Yeah, it's 2D. Yeah, because they use a lot of scripts to make things super efficient. Anyway, yeah. uh, and also you don't want to go all the way live action because you can just film live action. <laughs> Why would you do that in animation? And this is the problem that I have with some of these new movies you now that they release. Like, why going hyper real when you have live action that looks better? So to me, something here is the the right sweet. I thought that I had that thought with uh, actually uh, uh, the spirits within. Say it again. <laughs> the spirits within Final Fantasy. The yeah, that, that, that's almost, I was like, almost there. Why not and the, 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 <laughs> The valley, where is the valley? Where is the the weird valley? Uncanny valley. <laughs> uncanny valley. The uncanny, is, the uncanny, is, the uncanny valley, yeah. Somewhere here, right? Where yeah. it's, it's, it's almost real, but it's not really, you know. It's, and I think the Disney movies that we're doing these days, especially Raya, it kind of sits almost, almost there. Like mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a stylized, but it's very realistic in terms of rendering and stuff and the character proportions and all that. So, um, one yeah, thing, one thing I something to keep in mind. Yeah, sorry, Daniel. Uh, one thing that we we should probably touch on. I, I think you already, maybe you already did, but it's the fact that normally on production and industry, this this part of the process is done by a full department, and it has its own principles. Oh yeah. And 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 um, that's done prior to everything. So usually, it, it's it's kind of almost separate from animation itself oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of beca course, yeah. because it has its own principles uh, yeah, and yeah. it's usually the person that does this doesn't do anything else it's the same as the animators they, they don't do anything else but i'm thinking for for the the younger people in the audience i think it's probably it's probably important to say that yeah it's a whole profession on itself like storyboard art is yeah. a whole profession on itself um, it also depends on um which area of the world you live in and you know like i feel like yeah. when i was in germany you're much more generalist where a character designer does also the storyboards and stuff like that oh in yeah, big yeah. productions like in dreamworks and pixar and stuff you usually have like a handful of character designers that design basically characters for all all blockbuster movies but uh i think in other parts of the world it's a little bit more where a character designer might be also a storyboard artist or might be also a 2D animator, you know, while while in big studios like DreamWorks, Disney or Blue Sky, they have dedicated character designers, such as, you know, Carter Goodrich or, you know, uh, Craig Kalman and all these, those kinds of guys. Yeah, uh, Sergio Pablos is a good example. Uh, he's, oh, yeah. He's an awesome character animator, um, but he's very very good at character design and he ended up being character designer at disney and yeah he became now he directed and he's, <laughs> uh, he's a director so he's yeah some artists have more interest in more things and some artists yeah. are only focusing one aspect of animation or art or whatever so i think i think quill allows you to be all these things it allows you to be mm -hmm. character designer animator director mm -hmm. you know art director uh, uh, so it's awesome that uh, you know the people with a lot of interest and a lot of curiosity are able to jump in this program and just do their own short films with every, and you know. Um, so if you want, we can do a, a, this quick experiment and and design a character very quickly. Uh, if you sure, guys give me, we have half an hour, right? Yep. Okay. If you guys give me a couple of things from this list. So if you guys tell me you guys want a human, an animal, a thing, you oh. guys want, you know, let's let's find alien. three. Huh? An alien. An <laughs> alien. Okay, let's let's type it. Let's write it here somewhere. Okay. Let's just write it here. Alien. What else? Uh, personality, for example. Any suggestions? He's he's strong, but he's dumb. Okay, strong and dumb. <laughs> I love that. Strong and dumb. Oops, I don't know how to write. Um, let's he's got say. A bit of a I don't belly. know background. Any profession? Any lifestyle? Any background that we can think of? He's vegan. Vegan. <laughs> 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 Awesome. I love that. Um, <laughs> I think I think I think I got enough, right? 
yeah, I think I got enough stuff. So, card design. That's a, that's the time it's gonna be challenging to do this. <laughs> so maybe maybe he's a trash guy, right? That that gives yeah. a little bit of context for what clothes he would wear. Okay, where he takes care of trash. <laughs> Let me let me hide all this. No, I don't want to hide it. I want to move it around. Let, let me put it all in a folder. I'm very particular with. I just like to have the grid always on. I don't know why. Uh, Good practice. You know where the floor is. So. I don't know why. It's. I just feel more comfortable if the the, the grid is there. I think it gives me like a yeah, like a, like it gives me a ground plane. It gives me some. Well, also to... also it gives you orientation for snapping and stuff, right? You know exactly where it's going to snap. So. Okay, I want this to be here, somewhere, so I can still look at it. And I want to have my chair, my character here. All right. Alien, strong, and then well, what, what else we said? He's like a trash guy who takes care of alien trash. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's his profession, right? Yeah. I don't know what you call those. <laughs> I don't know. Trash guy? Garbage man. <laughs> trash garbage man. man. Yeah, garbage man. Okay. So, first thing, he's a strong and dumb. I think I, I have an idea for that. Uh, I'm going to use the triangle as a, sh as a basic shape. Right. Because it's very strong, he has broad shoulders, so he, these are his shoulders. And I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna start doing that kind of thing that I told you about. I really like the flow of the, the chest with the with the feet, and I'm gonna maybe do a small feet compared to the rest of this proportion. Okay, we got something. I got a strong chest. I'm gonna make him a V-neck. I think it's very important for vegan people to uh, to, to to wear a V-neck. <laughs> oh my god! I created a monster. <laughs> okay, so he's an alien, so he won't have a normal head, right? He will have a strange head. I don't know what. Uh, oh, let's see. What do we do? Let's see. I don't know. Does he have a tentacle maybe here on the on his head? I don't know. Let's. Hmm. I don't know how to draw aliens. Hmm. Give him like. He looks three, like a three eyes. <laughs> okay. Let me try. Is there this. a wrong way to draw an alien? Yeah, it's just antennas, and that's it. That's an alien. <laughs> and give him three eyes. That's the other thing that I didn't talk about. Um, uh, originality, right? How do you how how can you be original when everything is being invented? Right. <laughs> that's that's another subject that is pretty hard to to achieve. Um, he's a he's a trash guy. Huh, maybe he wears some sort of um, uh, hat. He might need some sort of work wear, like overalls Rocks. and things like that. Yes. Content. Some kind of jumpsuit. Like, like a jacket or something like that, like, you know. Especially because it's probably something that, that requires effort. So it's probably something. He probably needs the appropriate clothing to do things like that. Okay, I decided that this is going to be his distinctive feature. He has some sort of, <laughs> some sort of weird tentacles that come out of his, his head, right? Something like that. Um, some Cthulhu-looking dude. He's kind of like an octopus alien, I guess. And I'm going to make him very relaxed expression. It's not your expression. <laughs> Think you yeah. draw yourself a droopy eye or something. Yeah, that's the <laughs> other that's the other thing that tends to happen. It's um you tend to draw yourself a lot <laughs> <laughs> in character design. So it's not a bad thing. I mean I think it's cool. Um 
Give him, give him uh, one more eye. Just duplicate one more. Three eyes instead of two. There you go. <laughs> the third eye. And how is his mouth? Is he like a duck mouth kind of thing? <laughs> I mean, I find when I find myself that my character is not original and I'm I'm just repeating the tropes and things that have been done a hundred times, that's when I start to okay, I'm gonna look for some reference. I'm gonna look at what has been done in this asp in this field. And try to be try to find a combination of something that hasn't been done too much. So I guess I had never seen a this kind of duck face with the octopus head. So I feel I feel happy with that more or less. And I'm gonna make him like a long, long, long fingers maybe something like that. Kind of in a cartoony UPA style, which is one of my favorite things as well. So, like again, like I said, your personal taste is a lot of influence as well um, on what you're gonna do. Uh, so let's see, it's an overalls kind of thing, right? Kind of need some boots if he's. Oh yeah, that's that's true. Thanks for the tips. Let's see we're ha let's say we're happy with this guy. He has like a hat and I'll maybe something like a logo on the hat so it indicates that he's working on this uh trash company. Maybe I'll have his uh name tag or something there. And underneath all of that, I want to I want to keep the V neck maybe <laughs> somehow to just keep Given the impression. Some... Maybe some some uh, chest hair, <laughs> some gloves. Also, the T-shirt is salmon. It's, and I it's, think it's I'm going to give him salmon. like a very well trimmed um, uh, goatee, like a really sharply <laughs> trimmed. You know, because I imagine this guy being some sort of. Um, Millennial, a uh, hipster dude. So oh, wow. Think, so he has some sort of a uh, very well trimmed little uh, beard. And I think that helps with the idea that maybe this guy is a vegan. So who knows? And I gave him a little <laughs> earring, right? On his tentacle. Why not? You know? Yeah. So I guess maybe that works with all the. Maybe you might need to add more pockets because if if he's wearing a work uniform and it seems to be mechanical, you need to have like pockets to put tools on. There's, uh, a, maybe. there's a trash so, guy. I don't think a trash guy needs some. Yeah. He, he does need uh, gloves. Uh -huh. So I'm going to make a nice triangular shaped gloves that look kind of more <laughs> appealing. All right. Did so you we've... add the, the vest? The vest is, I think, super telling. Oh, yeah, you're right. Instead of uh, overalls, maybe we can do a vest. No, you, and he can have the vest uh, overall, but he can have the vest on top, right? Oh, I think we're making it too complicated now, huh? <laughs> Let's see. If we do a vest, maybe it'll, it'll be easier to recognize the... Oh, like what construction? Uh, something like that. <laughs> I kind of like the overalls better, to to give you this feeling of Me too. of uh, working as a trash guy. Okay, let's just what the, uh, uh, what's the time more or less? You have still twenty five minutes. Twenty five minutes. Okay, I think we still got time. Okay, I'm kind of happy with this guy. Um, I normally would do this, and I would use the grab tool a lot to kind of play with the proportions and see maybe I may want his head smaller or bigger. I mean, grab tool is just wonderful for these kind of things. So maybe I want, sometimes I would do this, I, oh, I want his legs slightly longer. You know, it's just, just so wonderful to be able to do that. Like in a, in a regular 2D drawing, 
-hmm. yes, you can do it. Yes, you can switch to Wikify tool. Yes, you can do all the stuff in Photoshop, but it's so much more fun to just grab your hand and just like you have a toy in your hand and just, oh, yeah, you know what? Sometimes when I do this, I do this as well. I put the character on the floor. And I use grab tool to give his posture a little bit more of a curvature, you know. And that helps as well with the the pose. Oh, he can he can maybe look one way or the other, but uh, yeah, this this curvature, these S shapes here, I think that also helps with the character design. Uh, Okay, I think we're just going to leave it at that and start building. Uh, I'm going to start building on a separate layer. Uh, wait, I don't like that. I like this to be this way. And when when we start building, we, st we, st we need to think about colors too. So... What's the color of this alien? And to build the character uh, efficiently, I normally turn on the, um, the wire, uh, wireframe, so we can really see all these wires. And let's see what's the what's the. I mean, regularly you do an alien green, so I guess we can just go green. Earthy colors, I think. Or maybe purplish because he has these tentacles, maybe. Let's see. The clothes will be kind of bluish, I guess. Right? Yeah. Blue What's, or orange. So. What, yeah, the, 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 garbage, the bar garbage clothes are kind of orange, so maybe purple with orange will work well. Let's see. OK, so I know I have to do two things here. I have to do the skin color, and then I have the, the v-neck color, and then the overalls so i'm gonna say that his skin starts here and i'm gonna end and it's gonna, it's gonna end here i don't need to do much more here with the and i use the thickness tool to make that and i think the simple the simpler i do it the better it's gonna be it's gonna be much better especially for optimization uh, and I want this v-neck maybe to be a white uh, shirt. So I'm just going to do just regular white. I'm not going to complicate for now. Oh. Do, do, do. And remember the technique here using this, uh, this brush like we talked about on the faces tutorial. Uh, it has two different endings. It's this one, and it's just kind of more pointy on the other side. So I, I'm using the, the the thicker side to differentiate here between the skin and the um, and the shirt. Uh, and the body on the bottom, we decided maybe orange. Let's see, because of this profession. And, and I wonder if it's a good idea to do this, or it's maybe better to do some lathing here. Uh, let's see. Maybe better to do lathing for this case. So it's going to be really simple here. Actually, it's better sometimes to just use the straight line tool and just build a silhouette of that lathe that we're gonna do i like to do that just right right in the middle and design kind of what's the what's the belly gonna look like more or less what's the the curvature of the belly right and this this lathing is also going to be his butt, so I think it's going to be useful to do lathing for this specific thing. Uh, it's going to be right in the middle, more or less. Uh, yeah, it's not perfect, but whatever. 
and let's just duplicate the hell out of this. It's maybe too much. But the, the rest of the body parts, we're going to keep it pre-optimized, pre so it may be all right. So let's see if I can still follow my sketch. And obviously this, I, I hear somebody with a mic and I have some kind of background noises in there. Yeah, Felix, I think your mic's just a little hot right now. All right, so we got the bottom part of the overalls, more or less. And for the rest of the overalls, I'm just going to use the same old trusty brush here. Super useful. This one is going to end here, I think. Um, and this one is going to end here, more or less. Let's do another for the actual strap here. Da, 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 da. And the arm, because it's going to be thick, it's going to cover all, all of those mistakes in there. Actually, I'm just going to do another one. I don't care. So fast. All right, just this. I try to preserve the personality of the sketch. That's the the biggest challenge in this process. Just make sure that we have that personality there. That doesn't go away. Um, okay, I think I got a good base for that. I think we you might want to save. Yeah, that's a good idea too. <laughs> Safe, all the stuff. Let's close this gap here. This brush is perfect for closing gaps and hiding the spaghetti and all these things, right? So now it's nice, sharp edges. We got a nice defined body and I still following my design principles. So let's do the legs quickly. Well, I normally just do one leg only uh, and then mirror. Da, da, da. And this one is going to be the um, boots are going to be maybe black or oh, brown, dark brown. And the same for the um, the same for the gloves. I'm gonna use something simple for that. Uh, feet are very hard to do. Uh, in this, I'm gonna for this for the speed sake. I'm just gonna do this. I'm not gonna complicate my my life with the with the feet. But they're pretty hard to do if if you want them to have heels and everything. The more realistic the feet are, the harder they are to create. But this is good enough for the fast and the arms are gonna have a short sleeve so for short sleeve we can do a simple trick which is basically recoloring and that will be sufficient i think um i'm gonna okay just a little thinner on the bottom i think his arms are almost like a tentacles so there's not a lot of anatomy in there I'm not gonna make him human anatomy, but a little bit thicker on the on the shoulder side. I think that works nicely. I'll try to keep that design language. And like I said, we can just just colorize. I think should be enough. And the skin is obviously purple, so. And maybe I can just do a line later. Uh, I decided uh, 
gloves are going to be the same color, so we don't have too many different colors. I'm trying to apply my design principles there. You have about 15 minutes left. Oh, perfect. And uh, the, the fingers, I'm going to keep them pretty cartoony. So it's maybe a little thing here, a little thicker over there. And grab tooling. Just so, so, so fun. It's like clay. So I like this shape. A little bit, you know, thinner in the beginning, a little bit thicker at the end. It gives a nice dynamic contrast for appeal, you know, the principles that we talked about. So it's not boring. It's not a simple cylinder, right? Uh, the fingers are also uh, important to follow the principle of rhythm. So you don't want all your fingers to be bent exactly the same way. So one is bent a little bit more than the other. This one is curling a bit more. And there is a pattern to the curling. Oh, my left touch controller is low. Shit. Okay, let me change batteries really fast. Yeah, sucks. <laughs> sorry for uh, you this. duplicated the finger oh sorry I'll, I'll undo it sorry for all the swearing by the way I'm gonna have to edit that <laughs> for YouTube right I didn't hear anything oh, okay. <laughs> I, 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 Dude, think we're gonna... I, I think I dropped one before <laughs> Danielle we're gonna get a channel strike <laughs> We're gonna get demonetized. Oh yeah, oh yeah, exactly. We don't get any money from this. I forgot about it. Okay. To <laughs> uh, another subject. <laughs> Tentacles. We can just do one, right? No need to. That, that was like a pro battery change there, how streamlined that is. You probably have a charger dude, on your desk. Right? Dude, I'm a pro changing batteries, man. <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time. I have like, I have like, I think 20 rechargeable batteries always ready. <laughs> yeah. That's the Quill Pro right there. Um, yeah. Funny how I choose tentacles because there's so much fun to do in Quill. And something cool, maybe I could do something a little bit like a different color on the, on the tip or something. Mm, maybe blue, I don't know. Something fun. Yeah, let's, well, I can play with the colors later, but I think this could be, this could be cool. Uh, I think that's all right. Just gonna, Make sure they're not completely duplicates, just a little bit different. All right, um, eyes. Let's create one eye. I'm going to be pretty traditional about this, just a regular circle. I want this kind of. Um, this is perfect to doing eyelids. Works really well. Just bend it a little bit. Just fold it over like clay. Boom. And we got the other side. Perfect. And we can play with the color of this too. Just a little slightly darker maybe. And for the pupils, I, I always use this guy because it has a little bit of volume. Just a tiny straight line, and that's it. You got your. The problem with this thing is it's gonna it's gonna do this in in Quest. No matter if you put it here, it's gonna do this. <laughs> it's so annoying when that happens. So the only way to avoid that for the when you translate to Quest is having this higher resolution. Uh, what happens if you rotate it 90 degrees so the pole is facing? 
Actually, yeah. Like that. Actually, that's it. Uh, the problem is you see this corner here. Kind of hard. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, let's not worry about that because we're not going to explore these two quests right now. Just, I'm just trying to be fast. So, okay. Uh, oh, it's so high res that it looks it looks black from the. Okay, whatever. Uh, okay, let's quickly do the mouth, kind of like a duck mouth. Uh, let's see if I can do something like that with just one stroke. And I'm going to use this curve here to help me with the smile expression. I think that's going to be... Sometimes these things happen when you grab tool too much, but a little bit of optimize cleans it out a little bit, you see? All right, we got this kind of duck face for the bottom. I'm just gonna do another one. I'll need to. And then we can define this my later with the with the line drawing. Yeah, it's almost like a duck. And I really, I really want to do this goatee. I think it's gonna be so fun. Something like that. And a little bit of chest hair, because why not? Okay. And the hat, the hat could be maybe this color too, because it's the company hat, right? I'm just gonna, uh, yeah, something like that. Cap it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And for the, the visor thing, I think one should be enough. More or less. Let's play with the colors a little bit. A little dirty. All right. Let's see how this guy looks so far. Uh, that's all right, more or less. Let's keep duplicating these eyes. Where am I? I mean, this one. Yeah. And three eyes. Uh, we want some eyebrows. Um, and I'm going to draw his mouth line. Doesn't have to be. Da -da -da. And then from the other side, could, we could also have a little bit of that. But I think one side is more protagonist than the other one. 
All right, so duplicate this to new layer, blah, blah, blah. So if I put the pivot right in the middle, should work once I click on flip X, more or less. And let, let's do the same with the leg. Uh, copy to new layer, blah, blah, blah. Put it right in the middle. Flip X. And uh, let's uh, merge everything. Oh, I forgot to do a thumb. <laughs> That's okay. Is there, uh, you guys can still hear me? Yeah. Oh, you want to save? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. I you I, might want to save at this point there again. Was such silence. I didn't know if I broke something. <laughs> Just I feel, like a lot of, I feel like that a lot of times in these streams. Are you guys still there? <laughs> okay, I think we got something. It's obviously not finished, but um, you can see how efficiently can build a character that looks more or less the way you plan it. Um, um, that is awesome. And, uh, we can we can still play again with the grab tool to maybe get some of that a little bit more. Oh, I forgot the uh, the ring. He needs to have a ring. So are you gonna make him uh, dance and walk now? You have two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, I think. Kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> get around can... like a dumbass, you know, like <laughs> like. <laughs> Just, just grab to him a little bit. Let him idle around by looking around in his environment. Um, he doesn't know what to do, you know. Yeah, let's... He needs a big garbage bag, that's for sure. Let's play a little bit with the colors first. Um, the color palette, I'm kind of happy with it. I'm, I like the combination between the dark brown and the white and the purple, but... Since we have all these tools, it's, it's cool to kind of play around with burn here and see, okay, let's do a little bit darker over there with this different tonality and see how it looks like. If, if we just select this slating aspect here, we can do something here. Just select all the... Only the lading part, maybe. And we can just... Hey, Daniel. For this character, uh, the way you built it, would you um, suggest building it this way to do the animations you've done in the past as well? Yes, yes. yes. This, this, build, mm -hmm. this, this The way I build it, the way is, I build it. is the most... Um, I think it's efficient because, um, yeah, you you can see that's 52K only. Uh, and I think that would be enough for animation. I think you don't need more complexity than that. I mean, if you look at the, the wireframe, it's still dense enough so you can actually animate things like the tentacles if you need to, and they will look all right. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's that's the, that's also a, a thing I wanted to show you guys how to how to be. Efficient. Yeah, and then you would just like move things into different groups as you have them. Yeah, yeah, that depends on the the animation that he needs to do. If I, is animation is a whole different uh, thing that I would I would need to get him ready for. Like depending on the action he needs to do. If he's, for example, if he's walking and that's it. So I would do maybe a walk cycle on the spot and use the transform keys to, to moving over in the space, right? Um, let's play, let's play a little bit. Uh, yeah, he's built really, really smartly. Instead of, 
instead of this, I can just maybe figure out maybe he maybe he wants to have a little bit more reddish at the end of his arm, maybe. I don't know. Got a normal. I don't know, I, I always try to play with colors a little bit to to figure out gradients and things that that maybe I can do to to make the the colors more interesting. In this case I'm adding a little bit of red here and there. I think it's cool if the top of his cranium is a little bit more red. Maybe. And maybe this eye is a little darker in general. Who knows? And the mouth we can we instead of that we can just use a normal maybe have some of that red and maybe this part of the mouth is a little darker yeah i think on that one you can go a lot darker right because it's yeah uh, look at that that nice. those little gradients that already help to give the character some the the colors to be a little bit more interesting a little bit more red here in the chest also helps now this guy's vegan if I've ever seen one. Does it look like a vegan guy? I mean, did, yeah. I, did I succeed in that? I mean, I wasn't sure if I was gonna, I think I really want a name tag here. Maybe a, like a bright yellow. So it feels like it's a company that he works for. Uh, maybe some buckles or something. I mean, I'm talking about details now. Um, Give him a carrot pin. Maybe some. <laughs> uh, he needs a recycling logo. It's the overalls. They tend to have this kind of thing, right? Um, uh, like a like a buckle or something. Uh, and then. Um, I tend to do this thing where the contact of of the objects, I try to choose a really dark color to to establish that contact between things. You know, since we don't have amid occlusion really, but a, a line here between the the contact between the the cloth and the other cloth, I think helps a lot to define that and make it look like a amid occlusion almost. It's a good definition line. I call these kind of definition lines, right? So if I choose the, the skin color, maybe really dark. Gonna get that contact line. Maybe some, sometimes if it's if it needs to be very precise, I do a straight line and I'll just do grab to to really be precise about that, right? So, and I just grab tool allows you to to stretch all these these lines the way you want. That's a little. Uh, maybe maybe it's better to have this flat brush here to look. So it makes it look like a contact shadow. Yeah, it's probably better than the th sphere. And sometimes you jump into these issues where, oh, this is super low poly. Look at this. We have a big corner here. So, I mean, this could be a problem or not. But if it does become a problem, then you you have to go back to the lathing technique, what I did here, just just to cover that area. But if it if it's if it's a very stylized character, sometimes you don't really do that. You know, you don't really need to do that. Uh, let me do. Six minutes over, Daniel, just for time reference. Okay, yeah, this all, all the stuff that I'm doing is extra. I think we got a good base for this, right? Super any cool. any questions about the building process or the character design concepts or I think we covered a lot of the good stuff. Yeah. 
You should use him for something. It's maybe, really cool. maybe he will appear in my next uh, uh, remedy two challenge. <laughs> remedy two, the for, villain. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be the bad guy for remedy two. He's gonna be a vegan bad guy. Actually, uh -huh. I'm gonna change. The, I'm gonna make his eye direction to be a little bit wall-eyed. I didn't talk about this, um, but the eyes give you so much personality on a character, and just changing this i think it gives him kind of a, a weird goofy look as opposed to um when you when you cross the eyes of your character uh if you cross them too much he can look like he's crazy or he has a problem he has a lazy eye problem <laughs> also if you don't cross it that much if it's slightly cross it can give you a feeling of cute a cute character like the Pixar, they do this a lot. They cross the eyes ever so slightly so they look more cute because that's what babies do. If you look at, I'm looking at my baby all the time, and I, I realize her eyes are slightly clo uh, crossed. You know, they, they, it's a little bit cross-eyed gives you the, gives you that feeling of innocence, right? And if you do the opposite, you get the you get the Homer Simpson look, and that's Homer Simpson, right? He's looking, it's wall-eyed. And, and that can change totally the personality and the, of your character. So I think I forgot to mention that, but it's, it's a really good thing to, to bear in mind, whether whether the eyes are cross-eyed or not. And I forgot to do his eyelashes. I'm gonna go make them really quickly. And... Um, Yeah, the flat brush for the eye for the eyelashes are is very very useful. So um, I've been having a lot of trouble creating more threatening characters. Is there a way, like a simple way, to make diamond shapes in in Coil? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Now, when you say diamond Tyler shapes, girl. are you meaning? What is the precise uh, you... diamond? <laughs> yeah, like what, what? What cut are we talking here? <laughs> How many carrots? Yeah. Um. D and D die. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah. So you, I mean, you've... I use this guy a lot for the bad guy on the remedy, the cube brush, because that gives you super. Uh, uh, sorry, you know, super sharp shapes. Yeah, and then you, you, you could do something like that with the cube brush, where you make one half of it a pyramid and then flip it over. Um, shading it like that though works cool for that instance, but sometimes quests can make it a little uh, a little Very finicky right. because they clip. Yeah. Yeah, the um, clipping on quest is um, it's a pain. Yes. But, There's a way to do that though, where if you do, you can build it really quick with two cube brush strokes, um, where they taper off, so you've got like a pyramid and you flip it. Just go back in with the flat square brush and then go over top of it and just replace it. So you can make basically make the exact same shape um, as one of the faces and then just place them as needed. Cool. Actually, yeah, that might work. Thanks. Yeah, Tyler actually has a full. Full tutorial on the virtual animation YouTube channel about how to make like the D and D dice. <laughs> yeah, I've got the D twenty in there, which is it's not one hundred percent perfect, but it's pretty close. <laughs> it's close as you'll probably get unless you it's close enough, man. <laughs> sit there for three years and do the exact like angle snapping things, which would take forever. <laughs> it's just not worth it. All right. Um, I'm happy this turned out well. I was really nervous at the beginning when I thought I lost my files. <laughs> but thank you, everybody, for joining and listening and everything and the questions. Questions. Yeah, I, 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 I yeah, in the most recent Quillen show, Rosina joined, and I said I'd give her a shout out because she's in New Zealand and she'd have to be awake at 5 a.m. to see it. But I saw her in here and I was like, whoa, you holy cow. It? Wow. Yeah. <laughs>
That's not the optimized way to do a shadow, but I'm just going to finish hey. that. <laughs> you know. It's um, all about presentation. Yes. <laughs> Let's finish the presentation with a nice shadow on the floor. What am I doing? <laughs> You're having fun. What am I doing with this guy? Okay. This guy. okay. He's standing on a pizza. Yes, he's standing. Exactly. <laughs> Shall a I vegan pizza, name? though. He's a vegan pizza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I vegan pizza. It's, it's, a it's a piece of pepperoni. It's a pepperoni it's a pizza. Beautiful. All That's right. very nice, Daniel. I, I love you it. Like the presentation. I like the presentation. Um, Thank you. I hope it gets you inspired to create some characters in Quill. All right. I'm going to stop the recording. And see you guys on the next one. Yeah, that was super cool. Thank you.